Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at code tracing our first program called the Dragonflies. Now what we're going to need to do is open up our code tracing chart by clicking on my documents at the top of your Schoology page. That will open up the Dragonflies code tracing chart in your Google Docs. Here you'll see that I've already broken down the code or the program into specific blocks, starting with your on start all the way down to the show number. We'll be filling out the outcome and whether or not each line item is correct through this video. Now, the other things that we're going to have to look at is what is the objective of the program? What is the program supposed to do and what is it actually doing? We'll identify any bug or bugs that we encounter throughout our code tracing test. Once we get done, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the buggy program was or the original program versus what we've done to correct it. So we'll be going ahead and filling this out together. So you'll want to make sure that we have our code tracing chart opened up on our screen. Now back in our Schoology, the next step that we need to go ahead and do is import our Dragon Files hex file into our make code learning environment. So we're going to go ahead and click on our make code. And from our make code, we're going to see that at this time, I don't have anything in my make code environment. We're not going to start a new project. We're actually going to use the import button to go ahead and bring this hex file in. The way that we're going to go ahead and do this is at the bottom of our Schoology page, you'll see a little box called attachments. In that attachment, you'll see an A14 Dragon Files hex. Go ahead and click on a download. And from there, it's going to actually go ahead and download this into your download manager. We're going to want to go ahead and select show in folder. And that's going to show us where your file was actually saved. Some of you, it may have been saved into your download folder. It looks like that's where mine went. Others, it may have actually been located into your Google Drive. Either way, the easiest way to find this is by simply clicking on recent and locating it through that recent tab. Now, we don't need to do anything with that from our download manager. So we're going to go ahead and close that out now that we know where it is. And we're going to go into make code. And from there, we're going to go and select import. When you select import, it's going to ask you to import your file. And we're going to go ahead and choose that file. And we're going to go to that recent tab where it should be located. Once you click on recent, find that A14 Dragon Files hex and go ahead and select open. Once you select open, go ahead and click on the green go ahead button and that will import your project into the MakeCode learning environment. Now that our program is loaded into MakeCode, we're going to notice that the emulator is going to automatically start to count down from five to zero. This is going to happen when the program is initialized during runtime. That happens when we use an event handler such as an on start. Now with our program, we need to go ahead and test to see what is actually happening. So again, if we check our app, we're going to notice that as soon as it's initialized, we see the numbers five all the way down to zero. Now, when looking at the actual program, what I'm going to notice is that it's showing me that we see a five waiting 100 milliseconds for 100 milliseconds. And it's going to repeat that behavior until we get down to the number zero. So how do we actually know if it's doing what it's supposed to do? The way we can check that is by using these little comment boxes listed on each line of code. By clicking on one of those comment boxes, it'll expand to show us what each block should do. So let's go ahead and click on the first one on our on start, and we can take that box and drag it out. And then in the bottom right hand corner, we could expand that to see exactly what that line of code should be doing. In this case, it's telling us that when the program starts, the LED grid will count down from five to one and show Happy New Year across the screen. That is going to be our objective for this program. So we wanna make sure we list that objective on our code tracing chart. We can do that by simply highlighting all the text and hitting Control C on our keyboard. And then we're gonna go over to the code tracing chart and down below where it says objective, we're gonna double click and hit Control V to paste that in. Now that we know what the program is supposed to do, we can compare that to what the program is actually doing. So again, that objective is now telling us that we should only be counting down from five to one. We shouldn't be seeing the number zero. We should also be seeing Happy New Year scroll across the screen, which we didn't see at all. So we're gonna go ahead and code trace this by breaking down the code and looking at each individual line. 
So the first thing we have to look at is this on start. And what does that on start actually do? So remember what the purpose of an on start is. And that's to basically run the program as soon as it is initialized. So again, we're going to go ahead and identify what the outcome is of the on start in our code tracing chart. So let's go ahead to that on start outcome and we're going to type in there the program runs when it is started. So this isn't like an on a button pressed. It's just going to automatically run. We don't have to do anything about it. And we've noticed that when we initialize the program by hitting that refresh button, it did count down. So my on start event handler is working. So we can go ahead and put the word yes, because it is correct. The next step is to see this show number five. So again, if we go back into make code and click on that little dialog box, we can go ahead and see that indeed it's supposed to be showing the number five. So we can go ahead and copy that and paste that in. And remember, we did see the number five when we ran our program. So that line of code is also working. The next one is this pause for 100 milliseconds. So again, when we go back to make code, what we're gonna double check is let's click on that pause block and see what happens. In this case, the comment is telling me that my program should pause for 1000 milliseconds or one second. My program, however, is telling me only to pause for 100 milliseconds. So here we found one of our first bugs. And that is that for that pause block, it should be pausing for 1000 milliseconds instead of 100. Now let's go ahead and double check the rest of our pause blocks. The second one we have is also saying to pause for a thousand. The third one is the same. Fourth one, and probably the same with the fifth. So it looks like we have one bug, but it's occurring in five different places. So let's go ahead and copy this pause for 1000 milliseconds. And we're gonna put that into our code tracing chart. So our code is telling us to pause for hundred milliseconds, but the outcome is pausing it for a thousand milliseconds. So this is not working the way that it should. And we can say the same for each pause block that is in our code tracing chart. So let's go ahead and copy that entire line and we can go ahead and paste that in wherever we see a pause block. So now we have our first bug. We're gonna identify that at the bottom of our screen. So the first bug that we've encountered is that the program pauses for 100 milliseconds instead of 1000 milliseconds. Again, we've found a bug, even though it is occurring five different times, that's gonna cause a problem with our program. So now that we have our first bug, let's go and check the rest of our numbers to make sure they're working correctly. So for my show number four, it's supposed to show four, three shows three, two is showing two, one is showing one, and zero is showing something totally different here. So we're gonna go ahead and hold off on the zero, but we can go ahead and fill out our code tracing chart for the rest of our numbers here. So let's go ahead and plug in the show number and whatever number it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, and this is gonna be the show number four. That did work. We're gonna do the show number three. Let's do two. And finally, one. And again, all of those worked just the way that they were supposed to. So again, to this point, we only have one bug in our program. Now let's look at this number zero, because there was something a little bit different with zero than what was actually put in that program. And in this case, it's supposed to scroll the text, Happy New Year. Now we're using a number block, and number blocks are not going to allow you to place text. So we're gonna actually replace that box by going to basic, show string, and we're gonna go ahead and drop that under the pause block. We'll replace the word hello with Happy New Year. Now, once you have the Happy New Year plugged in there, we need to go ahead and delete that show number. So now that we have our program worked out, the last thing we need to do is make sure we change those pause blocks to represent the thousand milliseconds. So let's go back in and change all of those 100s, make sure that they have 1000. And now our program should function correctly. So let's make sure it's actually working here. Here we can see that it's counting down. It's 
much slower than it was in the beginning. So it's counting every second. And once it gets to one, instead of seeing zero, we should see Happy New Year scroll across the screen. So now that we found that second bug, let's go and put that on our code tracing chart. Let's go ahead and type in what the outcome was, which is scroll Happy New Year across the screen. And that did not work. So we're gonna go ahead and put a no in there. So we have two bugs in our program. Now we've had six different line items that had an error, but really only two bugs. So we do need to go down to our bug and identify what the second bug was. And that is, it is showing the number zero instead of scrolling Happy New Year. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure we plug in our correct buggy code program. So the way that we can go ahead and do this is just by simply taking a screenshot. And once you go ahead and take your screenshot, you can add it into the correct program. Now we can do this by simply going into make code. You're gonna go ahead and right click in the space provided, and you're gonna go ahead and select snapshot. Once you select snapshot, you can go ahead and copy to clipboard. And from there, you can go ahead and paste that into your chart. Now that you have the corrected code as well as the buggy code, you're ready to go back to Schoology and submit your assignment.